Thank all the people whom are contributing and asking and we're getting to them and we thank you for all the questions and even if I laugh or make some sort of a comment it's nothing personal to the questions, I'm entertained by them all and so alhamdulillah. Even if you have to repeat it uh, a thousand times no problem. So uh, we like to thank everyone for participating and, and asking the questions and, and making people to feel like their community and draws people together inshaAllah and closer together inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu uh, Can Mulana please elaborate more about the spiritual new year Shaban, Nifsa Shaban, Ramadan start of spiritual year? <clears throat> the importance of Shaban and what's written upon the soul that this is the, the month, Shaban is the month of Sayyidina Muhammad Rajab is Allah's month in which a secret light and the birth of light is occurring and Shaban is the light in which Prophet attached as a special gift to the nation. This is my month in which I'm going to give to that light and to that reality. And then from that secret of Rajab to the appearance of Sayyidina Muhammad comes Ramadan which is the appearance of the creation and the nation. So only Allah come and teach us that Nisf shaban has to do with the spiritual new year in which Allah is going to write every event in a clear register, whom coming that year, who's leaving that year, everything that going to be written upon their soul of their rizq and of what's their need is then occurring. So only Allah from that association and that presence and reality with Sayyidina Muhammad then come to teach their students that that's a night in which to make your Salat al-Khayr. So the Shab al-Bara'at when they're celebrating the night of forgiveness, why? Because many things are written that Allah is giving a, a, a immense night, an immense night of whom, whom is coming to ask for forgiveness. That's the night that they put and prepare everything and say, Ya Rabbi this is our whole existence, our life and we… Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. You're putting and coming to your door asking for your forgiveness and write for us good and forgive for us what we've done of wrong. If anything we did wrong that is, is deserving of your anger and difficulty coming to us, Ya, riz, ya Rabbi supersede that, bring that to be lowered and grant us to be khair and good and goodness to come to us. So then they celebrate the Shab al and the Salat al-Khayr, the hundred rakahs asking Allah's forgiveness from the power of, of Surat al-Fatiha and Surat al-Ikhlas because they recite almost 1000 ikhlas, if every three ikhlas has the ajar and the reward of reciting the whole of Qur'an and the dress upon the soul of the whole of Qur'an coming upon the soul. So then imagine 1000 Surat al-Ikhlas that night. So alhamdulillah when Allah describes whom we guide is guide, whom we don't guide is not guided. When Allah assign us to awliyaullah then their guidance and the immense, immense bounty None will know it except the exceptional, these people of tafakkur. So means these are from the bounty of Allah whom know that. 
Others may deny it but they basically shot themselves in the foot. Why to deny Allah's rahmah? If somebody tells you that Allah's rahmah on that night then go out and grab the mercy. The worst that can happen is nothing happened and the most that can happen is Allah will reward your faith. So anything you do in Allah's way, Allah is the one who gives the recompense and the salary and Allah is the best of those whom provide. So if you put a hundred hours in something, do you think Allah is not going to pay you? It's not like dunya where people cheat you out of your hours and cheat, cheat, cheat you out of your salary. Anything that you do in Allah's way, Allah is the one whom provides. So there's no bidah in ibadah. So anyone whom is worshipping as much as they worship, as much as they make their salah, as much as they want to make zikr, as much as they want to do their ibadah, Allah is the one whom is paying them and giving them the reward and giving them the blessing. So these are immense, immense nights and the, the blessing is to be in tariqahs, to be told about it. Many people say, oh all my life in Islam I never heard those things, I never even heard what Shah barat especially if they were raised in the West under these new ideology. Traditional countries all know them, for a thousand years they've been celebrating these nights. So that, that becomes the immense immense blessings. The only problem is that under these new understandings and new celebrations don't go to an event of heedlessness to welcome a new year and then written for you, you left it in heedlessness and you'll enter into heedlessness and then create a difficulty for that year. That's what Mawlana Shaykh was always warning is that sit in remembrance, sit in istighfar, ask Allah for forgiveness and goodness and so that you can always enter into Allah's rahmah and mercy. And that's the reality of, if, of Islam. We said that every holy event in Islam is by maghrib, Laylatul Israhi wal Miraj. Why? Because you take the night is like going through the gate of that event. As soon as you spend the night in worshipness the tajalli is coming on the day and the, the, the recompense, the recompense, the salary, the, the gifts from Allah is coming the day. So, but the night is the time in which to send that night in worshipness and, and forgiveness so that Allah is preparing the soul to be dressed by its blessings in the day. So that's all of our holy nights are based on the Laylatul Qadr so that you can receive salamun hiya hatta mitla al-fajr. So everything we do good at the night so that Allah dresses us by the daytime so that those tajallis dress upon the soul and upon the reality, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, in many cultures they ground children as a punishment in isolation. So is this not a good way of punishing naughty children because isolation may be connected to bad memories? Go to your room or what kind of isolation depending upon how you were raised? If you were isolated for 40 days because you did something bad then that would be pretty extreme. But uh, go to your room and time out, this is customary. So yeah, it, that, that's something different. It's the same understanding that if you're doing something bad Allah's giving you time out. So go to your room, right? So the first, first one you're going to be thrown in it. But once you become rijal you're going to ask for it. So Sayyidina Yusuf is our example. The first one Allah took him by the means of his brothers and threw him in a well. He got hurt in the well because he fell down and hurt his knee. And that was the first one was not with his will. So everybody may understand isolation, punishment, time out. 
And you learn from that and those whom live the life under discipline, they should appreciate Allah giving them discipline and tarbiyah because the one whom was raised bi tarbiyat with no tarbiyah is a wild dog, more like a wolf now, very dangerous because no sense of discipline. That one you can't bring into discipline without severe consequences. So discipline in life is not something bad but it, it sets our morals and our compass. And Allah gave the example through Sayyidina Yusuf So the first one is by Allah's force but when he wanted to achieve the station that he was destined for, Sayyidina Yusuf asked because the dunya was coming too much after him, he said, I think prison is better for me now. So that I spend the time away from people and that was from His will, the first is from Allah's will. So when you're young you don't have a will, Allah puts you in a family of discipline that's then not under your will. But what's most important is that at the time you have a will and you want to surrender your bad character is ask Allah give me the strength in which to isolate from people. And that's when we describe during the pandemic and all these sicknesses, the pandemic is actually the people, not the virus. <coughs> the pandemic is the people, people are cross-contaminating everyone. People and their ideology and their mindset and everything that they contain is making everybody sick, mentally sick then physically sick, inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum Shaykh Wa alaikum as salam okay. How can those attract the energy and light, uh, those who are dumb or can't speak by reciting? They can't what, what? Speak, they can't speak or recite, they have a disability, so how are they able to attract energy? Play it, <coughs> play the recitation, if you have a limitation on your ability to recite <clears throat> then they play the recitation and Allah knows whatever limits He put upon a servant that they can play for the, the audible sound to enter in an environment and then as they connect their heart and make their madad that's what's powerful. So there's an outside connection so that you clean the space. So we clean our space with the outside sort of audible recitations. But the one whom begins to learn to make their connection and their madad, that's an energy that is something completely different. That once you start to make the madad, the appearance of these souls, connecting with them, energizing with them, the energy that comes from that then is the real protection. And that anything you recite in that madad that you made your madad and begin to recite, that energy becomes very powerful, it doesn't have to be out loud. Then they start to understand the reality of Naqshbandi zikr is actually khafi. But it's khafi if you made madad so that you're in the presence of the shaykhs, under the connection of the shaykhs and then your zikr khafi is that you're connecting with them. And that you're entering and keeping a state of semi-death, that's why you don't move anything, you don't move your hands, you don't, nothing. They just recite in a state like in their muraqabah. But the, the khafi without the state of the madad is it, just, you know, is something else. But the real intention that Mawlana Shah Naqshaban was drawing us to that reality was that you made your madad, you met deep into your connection as a result of being in that world of light. Less movement on your form brings more power to your recitations. So that's a state in which they try to take us to teach us that. 
especially in the SMC school of Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyah that specialize in the muraqaba and the way of tafakkur, how to make the madad, how to make the connection. At that time then the khafi zikrs, the, the breathing, all of these practices will truly illuminate the heart and the soul of the servant, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa If somebody is making the practices every day and improving, uh, will shaitan still be inside them and what happens to us in the grave? Yeah that uh, every day that they're making their practices and improving, shaitan will never leave the servant alone. That's, that's the, the way that Allah has designed the situation. So shaitan entered into paradise and made Adam and Eve fall and Adam was taught isma kullaha. So strong connection, immense lights and realities. Uh, how did shaitan do that? Because he entered into paradise. And they thought that maybe nothing like that will happen there. Means he can enter into any masjid. He can be at Masjid Nabawi, he can be at uh, Haramain, he can be everywhere. This is the permission that Allah has given. And that everyone has to know they have a devil assigned to them and don't leave yourself to that devil for a blink of an eye. So this is what Prophet was teaching. Ya Rabbi don't leave me to my devil, my nafs for blink of an eye because at one instant he is going to flip the situation and put the believer back into difficulty and hardship until they can reach to be mukhlas. At which time Allah has to continuously wash them, clean them from the hardships of what shaitan has put upon them. InshaAllah. So it's a continuous, continuous path and the, the one whom is meditating and doing all their practices, they may have increased awareness of shaitan's attacks, very vivid sort of graphic thoughts, graphic images, many, many different things. And that's because shaitan is intensifying his attack against them. So it's not to pay attention to any of these things, don't worry about trying to calibrate how much you reached and how you reached because we're in a descent into the ocean of nothingness, not somethingness. So in the ocean of nothingness you don't have to care, you just have to keep connecting, connecting, do the awrah, do the wazifa. Every time these shaitans are coming, ignoring and making the connection, keep the connection, do the practices. And at that time Allah addressing the servant with more and more lights and more and more lights and, and they continuously struggle until their connection becomes much, much stronger and clearer with the shaykh in the world of light inshaAllah. That's what's important. But the attacks they never end. That's the, the system in which to keep the believer on their toes, that they're continuously aware that shaitan is attacking and coming from every direction. And therefore they keep their practices, keep everything that they've been doing to make themselves to be successful, they don't leave it and they don't drop it inshaAllah. Otherwise then imagine the reverse, if people thought that they could reach to a place then they would just become heedless, they would stop practicing, they would stop everything. And then they would think themselves above the law of Allah's way. And then they would start doing things that are forbidden and, and, and transgress Allah's rules. So Allah kept the system is that the devil's raiding there right at the line and keep attacking, keep attacking so that they become stronger and stronger and they never stop fighting, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah uh, Forgive me for my bad adab. Uh, Sayyidi, what is the reality of the questions that will be asked first in the grave? Hmm. 
the reality of the questions that you asked first or the, the questions that will be asked of you? Yes. The reality is that you're going to have questions. That the angels of uh, the grave are going to come and ask questions and alhamdulillah that Allah gave for those whom attending these events that they're under the guidance of awliya. And the reality of awliya is like a law firm that as soon as they enter into their state of death in which they're be going, going to begin to pass away from this earth then the souls of the shaykh then are present with them in their passing and uh, inter intervening in any type of death and any type of difficulty at death that the servant may be under. So this is a, a great ni'mat and blessing from Allah and from the love of Sayyidina Muhammad InshaAllah. And this is under the intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad Shafi al wara the one whom intercedes for his entire nation. And that level of intercession has many, many grades. One that he intercedes on the Day of Judgment for all of creation and that he intercedes for his nation and that those whom are his muhibeen and lovers that he sends his Muhammadiyoon to intercede for them in their grave and any questionings and difficulty that they may be facing in the grave that these Muhammadiyoon are dispatched to involve themselves in those questions. That what difficulty they're facing, what issues are, are coming to the servant and how they can be resolved by the love of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, what to do with the ashes of a loved one who wished to be cremated? Oh. Yeah, whatever the family wanted to do with them, do with it, they can bury them and uh, ask Allah's forgiveness and uh, ask that the, the person be relieved of any difficulty and hardship. But the, the major part of the hardship occurred with the, the burning, so you, you try your best to, to put that to rest and back into the soil and, and have a janazah for them inshaAllah. But uh, yeah, continuously do good deeds and try to give them as a gift for the souls of these people who harmed themselves and were inspired to harm themselves. But uh, it's, a, it's a big difficulty. But those whom already did it then Allah gives Prophet gives many ways for our actions and our deeds to reach those who passed and not pass judgment on people but the, but the souls because we're not here to judge people that we live for Allah Ours is to do the good deed for the souls of people who passed away our actions and our charity are immense for them. And that's when charity has the most amount of power. So when we have loved ones we do what we do as a dedication because then it has a charity that is multi-dimensional or has immense amounts of blessings. On a holy, holy night and holy souls if you do charity and give food for the sake of this holy soul for example. Not only you get the barakah and the blessings of the charity, not only you get the barakah and the blessings of giving the charity on behalf of this holy soul, but now you have this holy soul is asking and accepting that charity and now asking Allah to send the bounty and grace upon your soul. So has multifaceted many, many directions. Dedicating a well when a, a water is, is a jariya, it's a continuous flow of blessings. So if somebody you know passed away whether they were good or bad or loved or, or, or not it doesn't matter because the fountain of blessing is continuously dressing them. And that becomes a water of relief if the person was in difficulty 
or a water of immense bounty if they were doing good. Because the bounty of, of what is coming to them is then reality is haqqaiqs and darajats and stations. If they were under difficulty that becomes the, the bounty of relief. So this is you know this is a whole bounty and mercy of Allah Sayyidina Abu Jahl was freed because of the birthday of Prophet So even on a Monday all punishment in the grave stop because of the birth of Prophet So imagine that, wells, charity, food, that's why we're not here to judge. But if somebody was in difficulty are charitable deeds that have an immense effect on those whom passed away. So we dedicate charity to them, we dedicate zikrs to them, we dedicate the feeding to other people for them, we dedicate water and wells for them. So it's all these acts that we can do to relieve any type of difficulty, torment or if they were in a good station then the bounty that they receive they start to pray for us even more. That's why when they dedicate something for the sake of Sayy- Sayyidatina Fatima Tazari Salaam, imagine then how much blessing she's taking, what kind of station her holy soul has that if she asks Allah and that she asks Prophet forgive them and grant them from my light and grant my nazar to be upon them. What type of dressing and blessing comes to the soul of that servant? It's not achievable by their own deeds. So it's an immense system, immense source of barakah and blessings, inshaAllah. Uh, Sayyidi a question from TikTok. Mm. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Walaykum As Salaam Do all tariqahs lead to Jannah? All tariqahs lead to Jannah? We don't, we, ca- we don't claim that to know who leads to where. We can't speak for all things because somebody could be tariqa babalu and be doing all sorts of uh, crazy things. That's not the viable sort of thing to think. All is, is not an acceptable term. Everything is under Allah's judgment but the turuqs and the, the ones that are adhering and known and famous, we can speak for Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah that definitely it's the soul of Islam and that the authorized guidance and the realities of Naqshbandi teachings and the principles and doctrine of Naqshbandi teachings and Ahlul Sunnah then it is the soul of Islam. Not only it take you to paradise but take you into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad because there are souls that don't ask for paradise and they don't concern with hell but they're asking for the face of the Divine. And this is the reality of Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah that this big awliyaullah they didn't do what they do for paradise. That's like going to Disneyland that they're not interested in the amusements and and all the entertainment. That they asked, Ya Rabbi we don't do what we do for those gifts but we do what we do to be in the presence of the Holy Face, the Divinely Face that everything perishes but that Face. We want that which never perishes which is the Wajik al Kareem, the the generous uh, face of Divine realities that dresses upon their soul. So no doubt Naqshbandiyatul Ali is the soul of Islam, inshaAllah, with adherence to sharia and all of its Islamic doctrine. And Naqshbandiyya is known for that and their adherence to Islamic doctrines and, and everything. So this is very important, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Can you please uh, explain the Jalali Tajallis, what they feel like and how to deal with them? When around others, can it feel like an inner wickedness, anger, or agitation? Yeah, the, 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 the symbol or, or an understanding of a Tajalli 
is, uh, is not something that can be described per person. But the shaykh when he talks he can give a description from his tajalli. But if, if there's a thousand colors and everybody has a mixture of a different color in their color, imagine all the hues and variations of the colors that would be. How can anyone speak to that? So did you eat something spicy? Were you angry? Were you had some difficulty at work? You went to someone's house and now you want to say that the tajalli has affected you. It's so many variables in that discussion that you can't answer to that degree. That's why the shaykhs can talk about themselves in their talks. So jalali means that a lot of hayba is on them, like a fire is on them. And in that tajalli they have to stay quiet. If they speak, oh they're going to talk about punishment and the whole audience is going to run because it comes with everything that, that, that is angering the heavens. So when the tajalli of jalali comes too much onto them better they stay quiet and, and hide themselves. And if they go places with the jalali energy, uh, Allah's might and uh, majestic tajalli it makes other people to be annoyed. So it's like a fire being turned on and everybody's boiling and they don't know why. So all their inner demons for us to understand, the demon inside somebody or bad energy or whatever people want to understand is staying quiet, he has control of that person, not bothering. As soon as a, a, a shaykh or somebody with uh, energy that is overwhelming if they come into the proximity of people their energy affects those devils, they become angered. So if we walk somewhere, we've walked many places in our life, we walked into a place, immediately somebody was starting to get angry and came up and started to yell at us, blah, 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 blah. I said, what's wrong with you, something wrong with you? But I knew that my energy is, is agitating certain people. And it's not in our hands, it's whatever Allah has dressed that energy to be. But we understand that the energy within the, the, the student and those whom are advancing affects the, the devils on the outside. And the same for Jalal, Jamal, the beatific energy. If they're dressed in a beatific energy then everybody will cry. So the, the beatific energy comes and people feel the beatific energy. So this is a, a, a reality of energy that doesn't stay only within ourselves but is emanating. So we can't speak to each particular person's experience because there's too many variables. But for a shaykh and he speaks about his own energy no problem. That when it's too heavy you know isolate, not the time to talk because it's going to be heavy on people. Even though sometimes we do talk and it is heavy but it, it, it could have been heavier. So it, it wasn't a full, full forced sort of Allah's might. So this is the, the reality and every moment their tajalli can change. In one 30 minute talk they can go from happy, sad to might to, to jalal to jamal and back and forth. And at every moment Allah is in a different tajalli. So then these are the realities of energy, that the, the coming and going of energies. Now for the student it's best that they just keep practicing and building and, and to, to build themselves. And people whom are negative again take a path in which to isolate at times and to build one's energy but not uh, to judge other people, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, is there any literature or thing which we can share with our kids to get nourishment of tariqah from their childhood? Forgive my ignorance, Sayyidi. Yeah, for the kids is uh, the, some of the easier talks or talking from what you're learning is to talk 
sort of a, a much easier version to the children. So the one whom learns has the ability to teach these realities at home and that's what's important. It's not what you, what you say to people. Many times we would go places, we want you shaykh to talk to all the kids but we don't teach kids. It's more important that you learn it and as a, as a reality of what you learned teach your children because they don't listen to what you say, they listen to what you're doing. So this is life. If you're looking for somebody you know they're gonna just listen to you based on what you said or they're listening to what you do, they're watching what you do and that's what's important with families is that come strong in the tariqah, believe in it, use it, be a part of it, have this immense ishq for Prophet and you should see then that effect upon the family. But when they see that you don't believe it and that don't you use it, well why would they? And that becomes the danger because you may have been surrounded by Islam but you brought them into these worlds in which they're surrounded by complete satanic understandings. So the likelihood of their adherence to Islam becomes less and less day by day. So unless you choose to go deep into that world and follow the sunnah of Prophet keep that immense ishq and love of Sayyidina Muhammad within yourself, your home, your being, your personality and that they become indoctrinated into that ocean. And that becomes their overwhelming ocean that they see, they see it, they're living, breathing and eating it. Then they have a chance of survival because remember you were at a home where 90% of Islam was around you, is in the store, was in the restaurant, every masjid and every azan was going off and maybe you had maybe 5% disbelief around you. But coming into these lands you reversed it for them. You brought them to the land of 95% disbelief and less than 5% they see belief. Then what do you think the hope of survival is? So that's why then Islam starts at home, the love of Prophet starts at home, keeping the sunnah and, and keeping the immense importance for the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad and the identity of Islam, the identity of the sunnah, that's the immense importance for the family is to carry it, be proud of it and that's the badge of honour, you gotta wear it. If they do that then at least there's a hope, there's a barakah and there's a blessing. So it become difficult, that's why these are the days in which uh, faith is like a hot piece of coal. Why? Faith for Ahlul Sunnah is ishq and love of Prophet so it's not the same as other people saying they have, oh we have Islam in our heart, no, no. Islam in your heart, that's not true. Islam has to be on your face, your head, your heart, your body, everything because that's the only protection and safety you have. If not then it become washed away and whitewashed, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa Is it okay to constantly be thinking of the end of times and awareness of Sayyidina Mahdi salam and Dajjal potentially being amongst us? No because then you'd be like us. <laughs> we would be concerned if you weren't. With <laughs> all that we teach and with all the signs that are on, on television and all the teaching they're trying to wake people up, if you didn't feel like that something is wrong. The heart is, is not waking up to the call of Allah The one whom is, is slowing down and spending some time with tafakkur, they can see that, look my shaykh teaches this. So we teach all of these signs, now you go look at somewhere else and they use social media and they say, oh my God this nation is saying their Messiah is here. Forget what my shaykh just taught me, 
some nation is saying their Messiah is here, what do you think now they're going to do? What are the common sense steps they're going to take? So they're telling you they're about to do something. Then you turn on a different social media and they say, oh you know what, we're going to reset all financial markets. We're going to take away your paper money and we're going to make everything to be a digital currency. Uh, and, and maybe your accounts may vanish, but we may give you something back, may. And this digital currency we give you from our central bank is going to be a controlled currency. If we don't think you're being good and you're being naughty, that money won't work at the restaurant. That digital currency won't work for your airline ticket. They'll have control of how you spend your money and how quick you should spend the money. Many things are coming. So you want to look at secular, they're saying very bizarre things. You want to look at scientific, they say they're cloning people. And they have uh, droids, they have this, they have all of these artificial technology and neural link coming into your brain. Then you want to look at religious people who say, his Messiah is coming, he says he's here. So in which direction would you like to look that you're not waking up and seeing something very difficult is coming? So make sure you have money at home, don't rely on the bank. Don't empty your accounts because that's more problems. But make sure you have money for safety in your home, make sure you have gold in your home, make sure you have food and supplies in your home. If you're hoping always the market is going to be available for you, that may not happen. If something gets reset and something gets shut off and anyone who doesn't believe it, go look at the, the, the videos of what happened in China. An entire province they shut the banks. And they came with tanks in front of the bank and nobody could take their money out for weeks. Well how did they eat? So that's what tariqah Mawlana Shaykh for 50 years has taught. Make sure you always have within your home your own protection. You have money set aside, you have some gold because they're not going to take cash if they don't understand the cash is valued in anything. Then make sure you have food supplies, that's why the tariqah has a market. There was no market before for tariqahs but for this area we have food supplies. So that make sure your home has food supplies in case something closes you can't get food out, they have oil and, and lamps. They said that you can make lamps with just uh, put water at the bottom, put olive oil on the top and you need some sort of a, a, a wick to burn it. And you have these little jars set up, the day that you need you can pour some extra cooking oils and you can actually burn the cooking oils. But you need the wick, the top of the system that is a wick that will burn and take the oil and burn and may burn for days and weeks and months. So these systems are a sign of faith. When the person has iman they understand the earth is like a body it's going now into a transition of death, something changing. So as a result then the believer is prepared and they can't prepare everything but they have to take one step so that Allah's 99 steps will dress them and bless them. And Allah opens the heart of the believer when they believe. So these are the signs and the tests of belief. When they believe they take actions and then Allah opens for them based on that action. Have yourselves a pair of nice boots, some tough khaki pants for hiking. Make sure you have a bag that you can grab with the cool grab bag, that you have some essentials within a bag. If there was an earthquake or something you don't want to go running around looking for that. You should have a bag that you grab and everything essential is right there. And if nothing happened, eh, alhamdulillah for you nothing happened. And if something did happen at least we, we prepared our lives for difficulty inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
This is Sheikh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. Inshallah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.